Here's how to make some fake foil magic proxies that look so good even the stingiest spike is gonna have to let you play with them. First thing you're gonna need are some foils to sacrifice to the cause. Uh, normally you'd probably just take foils that you get from drafts or your box or whatever, just commons and uncommons, those work. Um, but I tend to actually find that foil tokens work the best. The ink is never really on as hard as it is on the other ones, uh, and you can also get them uh, in double-sided versions pretty cheap from your LGS, so if you don't have any, uh, I'd recommend going with tokens. If you already have some, go for it. Uh, you're also going to need acetone, 100% uh, acetone. It's just nail polish remover. I would recommend getting the 100% acetone, though, with nothing else added, no, like, sensor, whatever, um, so it works better. Um, you're going to need some spray-on glue. Um, I'm not sure the brand really matters. I use Elmer's. Um, and then you are going to need a transparent sheet with which to print on. Uh, you can get these pretty cheap on Amazon, same kind of stuff that teachers use. And then you're just going to need a normal ass printer. So to start things off, you're going to want to blank out these foils. Uh, in order to do that, you're going to take your acetone, uh, just wet a rag with it. Um, I always screw the cap back on because acetone evaporates very easily. Uh, and then you're just gonna scrub the foil. And as you can see, the ink is coming off. Uh, different sets I've found have different ink treatments. Um, I usually like the tokens because like I said, they come off very easily, but uh, you can use pretty much any set, but some sets it, it's very hard. Some sets you're gonna need to scrub a lot. Some sets the ink doesn't come off or like it comes off, but also the foil backing peels off. It's weird. Um, so, but in general, you're just going to use the acetone and wipe the ink off. It's not always going to be this easy, uh, but it's going to same pro be the same process all the time. It'll be easy in the sense that there's not much else you got to do other than acetone and scrub. Once you're done, you will be left with blank cards, blank foils, fresh for making proxies. Next, we're gonna be printing our proxies onto that transparent sheet I showed you earlier. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can actually print them out, but what I like to do is use Google Docs. Um, there is a add-on called Set Image Size, so you just go to add-ons, you go to Get Add-ons and search for it, and then once you have it, you'd go to Set Image Size, Show Sidebar, this pops up. Uh, and then what you do is you just drag in the proxy that you wanna print. Uh, you're gonna click on it, you're gonna click Get Image Size, and every once in a while this, uh, red message here pops up uh, j just ignore it until it works <laughs> that's how i found um if you're using an image that is essentially the same dimensions as an actual like the same ratio of dimensions as a magic card um just set the height to nine um and make sure the width is automatically updating as well and you should be good um there are certain other websites that you can get with stuff that's formatted for printing on printing services i'll talk about them later um but so stuff for that they'll have like an extra little like border area like a bleed area for more pr for printing services to use i usually set uh these heights to 9.4 um, you might have to finagle if you're you know using images from different places and find the correct height but in general nine height for stuff that's cut to about the same magic card size you should be good uh you might have to mess with the margins but i can get eight at a time on a single page um you might also notice that all of the cards here are being printed in reverse i i flipped the images uh and that's because sometimes the ink can smudge if it doesn't like stick to the film very well so i print all of them reversed and then i will glue them together with the ink side facing down that way the ink is safe and trapped between the foil and the uh, transparency itself. So we're gonna go and print off our sheet, and here's the thing, a lot of people think that you need to have some kind of really fancy printer in order to make really good proxies. You don't. Uh, you go into your printer preferences. All printers have different paper types and quality modes. I usually go with photo paper glossy, and I set it to high, and generally that works really well for me. So you're just gonna make sure that you go in there and do that before you hit print. You're gonna hit print and you're good to go. Next, you're gonna wanna take your foils and spray them with your adhesive glue. Make sure that you're not overdoing it because I've done that before and it ends up making these bubbles and it's awful. Uh, so be sure you're trying to go for like an even coat from a safe enough away distance and only spray them one at a time and then stick them to the sheet. I tried to spray uh, eight cards at once and then stick them on every time and uh, it always ended up being that uh, they, a bunch of them wouldn't stick that well because the glue had already dried a little bit by the time I'd stuck them to the sheet. So spray them with glue 
one at a time and then stick them to the sheet. Make sure you've got everything all lined up. Uh, and then find something to stick them under for a while while it all dries so that everything uh, dries nice and evenly. Once the glue's dried, you're gonna have all your cards on your transparent sheet and you're just going to need to cut them out at that point. Just cut along the edges of the card to make sure that you're not cutting into the card. Otherwise, you should, part's easy, should be good. And once you're done cutting away the rest of the sheet, you are left with your foil proxies. And if I do say so myself, they look pretty great. I think they look pretty good. There are other ways of making very nice, convincing looking proxies too, and one of the ways is to have them ordered. There is a very good website called Make Playing Cards that you can use to uh, make custom playing cards. And I generally nowadays, now that I started making my own foils, I only use them for basic lands. Um, but it can be very nice because I don't have the time to make a foil proxy of every single land, but if I find a custom land that I really like, uh, I can make an order there. It's always cheaper if you buy in bulk, so basic lands are a really good thing to print for them, but I used to get other proxies from them. And it's nice, the cardstock is more or less the same thickness as an actual magic card. Uh, and there is a website that actually helps you print out an entire deck at once if you really want that. This is mpcautofill.com. Um, what you do here is you, you know, type in what you want your deck list to be, like, you would say, I need 20, it, uh, you could say 20 swamps, uh, and then be like, Black Lotus, uh, and, uh, Blight Steel Colossus, it's in there. Uh, and then you'd hit submit. And it would pull up an actual, like, deck list for you. Uh, and you'd be able to cycle through all of the different arts. Most of the art is pulled from the subreddit r slash npc proxies. There's a few big altruists that have, you know, giant ghoul drives that that site links to. Um, but there are also, you can go through the subreddit too to find some art, which can end up being, uh, pretty cool. But anyway, uh, you'd cycle through the art that you want find whatever art you want, and then you can actually click this generate order button and it will, as long as you follow the instructions on the website, it will actually automatically download and upload the cards into Make Playing Cards, which is the website that actually will print them for you. I generally just use this to download the images, because uh, I usually make my proxies myself, but you can download them and automatically have them sent to the printing service. I've generally found some issues with the automatic upload uh, system that MPC Autofill uses, so usually I'll just uh, take the images that I download and drop them in here manually, and just manually uh, create my order out of it. Once you have your art uploaded, you just drag it in, or you just double click and it would pop up here. Uh, and you can see why the stuff from MPC has extra space. Uh, it's because there's this bleed area, this red area here. Um, which is the area that might get cut out during the printing process, and that's why MPC makes all of their cards a little bit bigger than they normally are. Another way to get art, too, if you don't find anything on MPC that you like, uh, I like Card Conjurer. This website has, uh, essentially every kind of frame that you could possibly want. Uh, I'm still waiting on a couple. I def Ooh, they do have the, the sketch cards! I'm sorry, I'm excited. I'm excited, I've been waiting for this sketch frame because it means I can get, like, I can commission sketches and it won't look weird. Anyway, uh, you choose whatever frame that you want. You just add it. Uh, you know, if you want to do a multi-colored uh, card, you'd click, like, green and you click add to right, and then suddenly you've got a multi-colored card there. Uh, you can add in the legend crowns if you need them. It's, it's, it's great. Uh, and then you can go to text. I, this is, I was working on my, my boo token here, so you can kind of see that, but, uh, 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 just type it in there. It formats everything for you really nicely, uh, and then you can download it when you're done. Um, you can add in the art here, um, or you can just go, like, you can have it pull in the art for you. I tend to just actually download the frame. I usually just make the frame and download it so that the back is transparent, and then I'll toss it in like GIMP or something and add the art in that way because I tend to find it's a bit easier to finagle. But as far as making the frame and formatting all of the text the way you want it, this website is great and I it, it bothers me that this is not the website that pops up when you look up making custom magic cards because it's awesome. You can even, if you are going to use the MPC method that I mentioned, there 
is an option to add a margin, uh, which will, again, account for that bleed area that I was talking about. This is really cool. It's a cool way to either play with cards that you don't have access to, that you can't afford, or just bling out your deck. Uh, blinging out your deck is always great. I encourage it, but I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, like and subscribe, etc. Follow me on Twitch. I'm far more active on Twitch. I play Magic a lot over there and run some D&D &D campaigns. Uh, and yeah, if this was helpful to you, I hope you share it around. I hope you have a great time playing Magic.